This is a 1997 Murray Lawn General tractor. Wait, that's not my introduction, is it? Well, hey everyone. This is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. This is indeed a 1997 Murray Lawn General lawn tractor. But it's not just any lawn tractor. No, this tractor is tradable and digitally ownable on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain. And if you're a little bit confused about how that works or what that means, you're going to learn in this tutorial today about the concept of tokenization. We're going to be talking about an idea of representing real world assets on a cryptocurrency blockchain like Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, or maybe its own independent blockchain for assets like your home, your car, or even your lawn tractor. So I'm going to be describing first the concept of non-fungible tokens, which are a special type of tokens used to represent specific assets. Next, I'm going to be talking about the concept of digital signatures using elliptic curve cryptography. That's how we're going to prove that we own our digital assets uh, that are representing real world assets just like we do when we prove we own some Bitcoin or Litecoin to spend it. And finally, I'm going to be showing you a real working proof of concept with this that I built using a Raspberry Pi, a USB key, a few more electronics, and my trusty lawn tractor. So, the first thing that we need to discuss when we talk about the tokenization of real world assets is the idea of non-fungible tokens versus ordinary tokens that we would trade on a blockchain. When you talk about normal crypto tokens like Bitcoin Cash, like Litecoin, like Ethereum, all of these tokens that represent a particular unit of currency are completely interchangeable. It's kind of like cash US dollar bills. One dollar bill has the same value as any other one dollar bill. It doesn't really matter which one you have, it's just the value that it represents. When you talk about something like Bitcoin, it's the same thing. Uh, when you own a unit of Bitcoin, you own a unit of Bitcoin. It has the same value as any other one does. But what about representing single assets? So take, for example, something like the CryptoKitties uh, tradable assets on Ethereum. Those are non-fungible tokens because each crypto kitty or each asset more generally is unique. And that's the same idea when we talk about tokenizing real world assets. Your car is unique to every other car out there. You have to represent that singular asset itself on a token if you want to talk about a digital version of your car that you can trade the title for. Same thing with a home or a lawn tractor, right? My lawn tractor is my lawn tractor. I don't want my cryptographic key to be able to start up anybody else's lawn tractor, and I don't want anybody else's uh, you know, lawn tractor token to be able to start up mine. That wouldn't make the system work. So non-fungible tokens are tokens that represent these singular assets, and there's special standards for them on the blockchain, just like there is a sort of standard for the regular cryptocurrencies. So Ethereum has its own standard for issuing non-fungible tokens, which differs from the ERC-20 tokens uh, that are often issued and traded uh, using for stablecoins like DAI, for things like Basic Attention Token, for the Brave Web Browser. Those are just regular tokens, but there's a special standard used for these non-fungible ones. On Bitcoin Cash, the SLP standard is used for issuing tokens, both fungible and non-fungible. So you can issue a regular old token like the SPICE token using SLP, or you could also issue a token that is considered to be non-fungible, that represents unique real-world assets. Now one easy way to do that that I did for this prototype is to simply issue a token uh, where there's only one unit of currency. So when I created my lawnmower token for this proof of concept, I simply created a token that only has one token issued and it's not subdivisible. So anytime I go to trade that token to a different address, it's non-fungible because it, oh, there's only one token that represents one singular asset. So the next thing that we need to talk about is the concept of digital signatures. 
Now, digital signatures are incredibly important for cryptocurrencies, and they're going to be important when we talk about this concept of tokenization as well. For every address for your cryptocurrency, it starts out with a unique private key. That private key is used to derive a public key using an elliptic curve algorithm. Now, for a lot of cryptocurrencies, there's an extra step to generate the address, which usually involves hashing and encoding the public key. But what we need to worry about most is the private keys and public keys. A private key is used to derive a public key using that elliptic curve algorithm. But the really important thing is that you can't go backwards from the public key back to the private key. That's what makes this all work. But you can use this concept of digital signing using these algorithms to prove that someone is the owner of a particular public key without revealing the private key. So for example, when you own some Bitcoin and you go to send Bitcoin to somebody else, your wallet actually signs the transaction. So your wallet forms a transaction that uses a special format and has special rules to it that's going to allow you to transfer that Bitcoin to someone else. Now, your wallet will use your private key to create a digital signature using that transaction as what's called the message as part of that algorithm. Now, anybody else that's viewing that transaction on the blockchain after it's confirmed can verify that you were the rightful owner of that Bitcoin that you sent to somebody else by only looking at your public key that's included in the transaction. You never ever reveal your private key. But the way these algorithms are designed, it's mathematically provable that you're the owner of the public key if you can sign a message with the private key. Now when we talk about Bitcoin transfers or Litecoin transfers, all that transaction that you're signing is is a particular type of message that you're inputting into the signing algorithm. You, a, uh, a digital signature algorithm can sign any arbitrary message. So in the case that we're talking about tokenization, that could be a, uh, some kind of message used by a door lock or a starter system on a lawn tractor or car to verify that you own uh, the key for the public address that that asset is owned at. Again, the verifier only needs the public key to verify ownership along with that signed message. So here's how this works in our proof of concept. The starter module for the lawn tractor, which is the Raspberry Pi, requests uh, a digital signature to be done for an arbitrary message that it builds using the asset ID, the current uh, owner of the token, and a timestamp. Our USB key or our hardware wallet signs that message, and then the starter module can verify that signed message for that address, proving that you are the rightful owner of that asset. So with a home, for example, you could do something like, you know, tap your phone wallet on a little door lock outside, uh, and that'll do a, uh, a little challenge response between the lock and your cryptocurrency wallet, and you will prove using a digital signature that you own that asset. So now let's go back out to the shed and see how this proof of concept actually works. So let's take a look at my proof of concept for a tokenized lawn tractor in action. A rough summary of how this works is that there's a non-fungible token on the Bitcoin Cash blockchain using uh, the SLP token standard that represents this lawn tractor. My Bitcoin Cash address that I generated for this project is the current owner of the tractor, and therefore I have a private key that I can use to prove that I am the owner of that address. So what this proof of concept does is the Raspberry Pi um, knows who the current owner is by checking out an SLP Explorer called SLPDB. It fetches the current owner and generates a digital signature request for this thumb drive that's storing the private key. So the starter requests that my USB key prove that it is the actual owner of the lawnmower by proving digitally that it's the owner of that Bitcoin Cash SLP address. So the USB key generates a valid signature for that message, sends it back to the Raspberry Pi, 
And the Raspberry Pi validates that I am indeed the current owner of this lawn tractor using the digital signature verification algorithm. Now this tractor is wired up and my prototype is wired up to show that I have a valid signature request and that I can go ahead and start the tractor with this green LED light. So when the Pi sends a signature request to the USB key and the USB key proves my ownership, it allows me for up to 30 seconds to go ahead and start the tractor using that particular approval. This tractor is just wired up to close a circuit so that uh, the lawn tractor will activate the starter mechanism when I press a button here shown on this breadboard. Now it's really cold right now in Pennsylvania and my lawn tractor doesn't really want to start, but that's okay. For demonstration purposes, what you're going to hear is when I press this button, my lawn tractor is going to turn over and try to start. Now that lawn tractor circuit is simply done using what's called a relay. That's just a electronically controlled switch. So when I press the button, some code in my Raspberry Pi tells the relay switch, which controls a larger 12 volt circuit, to go ahead and close. And that circuit goes from the tractor's battery to the starter solenoid and tells it to turn over. So I think this is a really neat way to do a proof of concept for this concept of tokenization. I have a real world asset, which is my lawn tractor, represented as a Bitcoin Cash blockchain token. And by proving that I own that token at an address using digital signatures, just like you do when you want to prove you own some Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash to spend it, I can prove that I am the real owner of a real world asset. And using modern electronics, I can actually tell that physical device to start up at my request. So you can think about this also being applied to something like a home or a car. Uh, there's lots of people running what they call the Internet of Things in their homes, which is digitally controlled things like light switches and locks. So you could have a front door lock that's controlled by a device like this, where you simply tap your Bitcoin Cash wallet on your phone using you know, NFC or some other protocol, and it proves that you're the rightful owner of your home and opens the front door for you. Or you could think about a car. I first heard about this concept discussed by Andreas Antonopoulos on Joe Rogan's podcast when it comes to cars. You know, normally we have to go to the DMV to exchange titles and physically exchange keys when we sell a car to somebody. But in this future, you could imagine simply creating a new transaction on a blockchain to transfer somebody uh, their car to their new address. And when they get in their car, they could put in a smart card or a USB device or again, just tap their phone with their wallet and that car would start up for them because they digitally proved that they own that um, real world asset token at that blockchain address. So it's just really fascinating potential future. So as always, I wanna thank you very much for listening to this tutorial. This has been a really interesting project that took me a lot of uh, tinkering to get right but I think it's a great way to demonstrate this concept of tokenization. So I'll be posting the source code for my proof of concept with the blockchain mower um, on the Chain Tutorials website. There will be a link to that source on GitHub. Uh, as well, in uh, hopefully shortly, I would like to upload a code companion video that will go more into the technical details for how I built out that proof of concept. Uh, there's a lot of interesting challenges along the way, and I think for those of you that like to tinker with coding and electronics, uh, you'll enjoy seeing how I did that. So as always, I want to thank you very much for listening, and it's been great learning something new with you today.